Hey guys, good evening. Let me share my presentation with you. Just give me one moment. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, hello. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Ahorita está cargando la... Aquí está. Ya está cargando la presentación. Uh, well, guys, we're going to continue with the class. We began yesterday, ¿verdad? And yesterday we stopped here. Nos quedamos acá. Okay, we were uh, going to talk about apologies, right? And we were saying that uh, there are different, you know, phrases that we can use to apologize. ¿Verdad? Es importante saber porque, pues, de repente podemos cometer, digamos, un... Eh, una imprudencia, ¿verdad? Y necesitamos pues pedir disculpas, ¿verdad? Entonces, it says people apologize in different ways, ¿verdad? For example, if someone complains about the noise from your stereo, you can say, well, apologize and give an excuse. Eso es lo primero, ¿verdad? I'm sorry. I didn't realize. No me había dado cuenta, ¿verdad? Um, ad apologize and admit a mistake. I'm sorry, I forgot I let it on. Or I left it on, I'm sorry. Or, I'm sorry, I'll turn it down right now. Okay? Oh, and, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, I'll make sure to keep the volume down. Right? Entonces, those are some of the um, the examples that we have. And it's important, right, that we learn how to do it. Es importante saber cómo hacerlo porque uno nunca sabe, ¿verdad? And uh, it's important that you let the people know that you are sorry, ¿verdad? You acknowledge how they feel, okay? And also we were going to read, hello, hello, Daniel. We were going to uh, talk a little bit about the grammar fo uh, focus uh, point, which is requests. Requests, I'm sorry, with models and would you mind? Eso es lo que vimos ayer. Voy a pasar lista rapidito, chicos. Solo denme un momentito. Y ahorita les... Aquí okay, un momento. Aquí están ustedes. Ya los encontré. Ada Agar Burgos Magaña. Ada. Eh, Brenda Isabel Castro Ruiz. Present. Thank you. Claudia Lisset Velázquez de Salgado. Ah, usted me escribió, ¿verdad? Claudia me escribió. Damaris Saraí García Cerón. Damaris. Eh, Daniel Alejandro Llanes Díaz. Present teacher. Thank you. Eliu Fernando Flores Díaz. Present teacher. Thank you. Elsi Cristina Coreas de Ramírez. Eh, Flor Noemí Dimas de Rivas. Present teacher. Thank you. Francisco Antonio Calderón Rivera. Francisco Ernesto Jiménez Rivera. Gabriel José Hernández López. Gisela Emperatriz Cañas Bonilla. Present. Gracias, Gisela. Héctor Iván Pérez Martínez. Iván Ibrahim Ramírez Quijano. Present, teacher. Thank you. Julio César Campos Yara. Present, teacher. Thank you, Carla Alicia Barrera Mena. Car Gracias, Carla Elena López Rivas. Kevin Alexander Sánchez Ramos. María Dolores García de López. Permítame. Eh, Rebeca María Rosales Romero. Present. Gracias, Rebeca. Eh, Wendy Paola López Martínez. I am here, teacher. Thank you, Xiomara Violeta Salazar Iraeta. Present. Thank you, and Jocelyn Elizabeth González Cartagena. Jocelyn no está. Bye. Dígame, Gabriel. Gabriel. Es que escucho que está pasando la lista, teacher. Y aquí ah, estoy en la ronda. Vaya, ahorita se la ponemos la lista. Hola, de asistencia. me escucha. Yes, thank you. 
Ya se la agregamos. Uh -huh. Gracias, teacher. You're welcome. Vaya, chicos, entonces hoy sí, I'm going to continue. Okay, bear with me. I'm going to move here. Ahí estamos. Los demás, este, yo paso asistencia al final, así que no se preocupe. Ahí le vamos a agregar la, la asistencia. Entonces, we were saying yesterday that we have, sometimes we can um, make requests with um, can't, with could, and would, right? Can't is informal, could is more formal. And also, we were saying that would, right, it's also formal. But you don't have to get confused, or you don't have to confuse would con would you mind, porque would you mind incluye un gerund o un gerundio, ¿verdad? Entonces, ese es diferente. That's why we need to be very careful with these ones, okay? Así de que, preguntas, chicos, con respecto a este, a este punto de la plataforma. ¿No? Bye. Entonces, vamos Bye. a... Okay, very good. Let's go ahead and match these um, requests, right? So here we have, it says match the requests with the appropriate responses, right? Then compare with a partner and practice them. More than one answer may be possible, okay? So if we say something like, could you let me $20? So how would you answer that? ¿Cómo responderían a eso? Teacher, it yeah. can be, I wish I could, but I don't have in this moment. Okay, why not? Yeah, right. I wish I could, but I don't have in this moment. Okay, so you would leave number one with letter. Uh... Ah, pero no está en la lista, perdón. No, it's not in the list. Ah, uh -huh. no, pero sí, está perfecta. Uh -huh. You can say, I wish I could, but I don't have right now. Uh -huh. So from but the list. It can be letter D, teacher. Sure, no problem. I'll be glad to, okay? Very good. Mm, yeah, sí, podría ser, but the number one with letter F. What about number two, guys? Would you mind picking up a sandwich for me? Eh, Ibrahim, Ivan, Ibrahim. Eh, I'm really sorry, but I'm busy. Mm -hmm. I'm really sorry, but I'm busy, right? Letter E, Uy, letter E, muy bien. What about number three, guys? Can you help me move into my new apartment tomorrow? Carla? I'm sorry, Carla, casi no se le escucha, fíjense. Sure, no problem, I'll be glad to, pero ya la ocupamos. Fíjense, Carla, que en el caso suyo, yo, yo creo que usted está usando el, el, el micrófono de su, de su computadora, no lo de los audífonos. Por eso es que nosotros casi no la escuchamos. Ajá, entonces como que no le reconoce los audífonos, la computadora. Entonces usa el micrófono de la comp. Solo para que sepa, por eso es que nos cuesta escucharla. Uh -huh. eh, number three dijimos. Number three, can you help me move into my new apartment? Yo usaría, I'm really sorry, but I'm busy con esa. Uh -huh. <coughs> letter E. Uh -huh, letter E. I'm really sorry, but I'm busy, okay? Teacher, teacher, the, the first one, it was letter D. Because it's, I think it's more, mm -hmm. I don't know how can I say. Are you kidding? I'm totally broke, mm -hmm. but estoy, yeah. estoy pero en bancarrota, ¿verdad? Are you kidding? I'm totally broke, okay? Very good. So one with letter D. Number two with letter E. And number three with letter E también. ¿Qué piensan ustedes? Number two, can you help me move? No, would you mind picking up a sandwich for me? Uy, perdón. Mm -hmm.
Yo usaría number one with, no, I'm sorry, number two with letter F, ¿verdad? Or it can be letter F, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure, It's no more problem. Polite. I'll be glad too, right? Number three with letter E. Can you help me move into my apartment tomorrow? No, no, I'm really busy, okay? What about number four? Would you mind not smoking here? Me, teacher. Mm -hmm. Letter C. Letter C. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize this was a non-spoken section. Okay, muy bien. What about with number five? Would you please move your car? It's blocking my driveway. Me, teacher. Mm -hmm. Letter. I, I, I can choose, choose the letter V. B. Sorry, I don't write away. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'll do it right away, right? Would you mind not talking so loud? Yes? Would you mind not talking so loud? B, letter A. Letter A, we're sorry. We'll talk more quietly, right? Mm -hmm. Very good, excellent, okay? So, questions about the vocabulary words? No questions, ok. Yo creo que ya casi terminamos la sección para que vayamos a la segunda, porque tenemos hoy y mañana para terminar también parte de la, seg de la segunda sección. Entonces, um, now, let's, let's analyze very quickly, okay, the, okay, the answers. Could you lend me $20? ¿Verdad? This is, this is letter D. Are you kidding? I'm totally broke. Cuando yo no tengo dinero, ¿verdad? I use I'm totally broke. Pero nada de nada, decimos en español, no tengo un centavo partido por la mitad. <laughs> right? I'm totally broke. Are you kidding? Right? Eh, number two, would you mind? Miren cómo se usa acá el ING. Would you mind picking up a sandwich for me? Right? And the person says, uh, sure, no problem. I'll be glad to. Right? Can you help me move into my new apartment tomorrow? Can you help me move, right? Number three, it's letter E. I'm really sorry, but I'm busy. These are excuses, okay? Some of them are excuses. Uh-huh, Carla? Teacher, in, in Spar, después hay en la plataforma de los OIPC de esta forma y me dio error, entonces no puse a verse, por eso le enseñé las respuestas al contrario. Sí, es que a veces en la plataforma quizás la, se guardan o guardan la respuesta eh, que no es. Porque sí, a mí ha pasado que con, eh, resolvemos el ejercicio y si usted se fija, lo hemos resuelto y todo está bien, ¿verdad? Pero a veces sucede que eh, los que están, los que ingresan, los ingresan de forma eh, incorrecta, ¿verdad? Eso es lo que pasa. Si quiere, podemos ver rapidito cuáles son las... Eh, las opciones que le dan solo que tengo que abrir la plataforma de mi momento está cargando a un look se ha quedado aquí en el preintermedio entonces ya vamos a buscar el, el intermedio que es el de ustedes eh, muy bien voy a moverme acá These, you know, are the ones, right, that uh, Carla is talking about, okay? She's talking about the knowledge check in 1.9 because you have the same questions with the same answers, right? Así que let's go ahead and check them and see if they match. Deme un momento porque no quiere cargar. See? No, no quiere. Ahí está pensando, vaya, Carla, de mi momentito. Ya cuando llegue ahí, yo le muestro acá para que revisemos lo de las respuestas, ¿ok? Vaya, perfect. Entonces, after 1.9, ¿ok? It moves to the next point. And the next point has to do with a, a reading, ¿ok? It says, in this class, you will develop skills in guessing, meaning from context and reading for specific information, right? Now, the different, um, I would say, 
strategies, right, that we need in, in reading, well, they are plenty, hay un montón. But generally you skim, which is you just uh, scan the text. But this one is different. This one, it says skills, skills in guessing meaning from context. Que es lo que a veces nos cuesta, ¿verdad? Eh, es una práctica bien, eh, I would say, useful. It's very useful because you learn words or new words, ¿verdad? Es como que usted lee y aprende palabras, pero por su contexto, no exactamente por el significado. Y eso es algo que se recomienda cuando estamos leyendo en inglés y nos cuesta, ¿verdad? So try to eh, guess the meaning of the word. In, within the context, ¿verdad? Entonces, here we have an article. It says summer in the, count, in the country, right? How is summer in the country different from young people from summer in the city? Okay, so here we have an article, guys. If you, if you can go to your manual, si puede ir a su manual o si puede ver la pantalla, that would be perfect. Pero si yo lo que recomiendo es que mejor vea, lo vea desde el manual en otro dispositivo porque la letra pues está un poquito... Eh, por Rosa. Entonces, I need some volunteers, ¿verdad? It says, before I came here, one child said, I thought swimming was running through an open fire hydrant. Okay? Entonces, someone, a volunteer to help me reading, uh, to help me uh, read. Okay, Daniel, can you continue desde here hasta expenses, please? Okay. Here is a summer camp. That's only an hour from others near me, uh, excuse me, an hour from New York City, but a world away. This can and four other near me are wrong, nearby. nearby are wrong by the fresh air found. Since 1877, the found has helped poor children from New York City spend summer in the country. Each year, over 10,000 children aged 6 to 18 participate in the program. Some stay at camp, others live with a host family. The fund pays for all expenses. All expenses. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Xiomara, can you please continue? Okay. Uh, camps are for eight to five olds at camp children can go to stars, see air and cows and other animals and go hiking and of course the children learn responsibility helping out with chores like making making beds and waiting waiting on tables. So learn a lot of counselors, college students around the United States and from other countries. Very good. I think it's counselors, right? Counselors. Okay. Eh, se le escucha entrecortado, fíjense, Xiomara. De repente se queda una pausita y luego se escucha usted. Una pausita y luego se escucha usted. I don't know mm -hmm. what it is. I don't know if it's... If it's the... Pero, sí, pero sí se le entendió todo porque solo es una pausita así de microsegundos que se lo escucha. Ya, yeah, but thank you, Xiomara. Gracias. Ok. Um, Francisco, can you please continue with the next one? Y luego Iván con el siguiente, please. Yes, teacher, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, host families from tier 10 states in Canada volunteer to have children spend the summer with, with them. Many of these families have their own children. The visiting child children become part of the family. They go with the family on picnics to the pool or beach and of, on trips. De ahí me parece, no sé si puede subir un poco la... No, por eso les preguntaba si tenían el manual, porque como es diapositiva no la puedo mover. Ah, Ajá. perdón. Pero les leo yo lo último, dice, eh, the children 
are from six to 12 years old and when they made their first visit and most and most are invited back. Some of the children and families become friends for life. Okay, so you, well, I don't have more uh, text. Pensé que tenía más texto para que me ayudara Iván, pero no tengo. It says, read the article. Imagine you work for the Fresh Air Fund and a mother wants to send her child and calls to us information. How would you answer these questions? Okay, so is the Fresh Air Fund program new? What do you think? How would you answer that, guys? Si quieren, le voy a compartir la fotito del artículo para que lo leamos. Déjenme ver si lo encuentro. Eh, I think it's here. Te lo voy a buscar. Está, para los que abren el manual, está en la página 39. O sea, la página 8, dice ahí. Página 8. Es este, se lo voy a pasar. Se los pasaré en WhatsApp. Grammar Focus. Sí. No, 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 es un reading. Ahí se los puse en, en el chat por si alguien más lo quiere ver. Ya encontré el ejercicio también, Carla, ya lo vamos a ver. Ok. Vaya, veamos. Is the Fresh Air Fund program new, guys? Based on the reading. Vamos a basarnos en, el, en la lectura para contestar estas preguntas, ¿verdad? Is the Fresh Air Fund program new? Yes, it is true. Okay, yes, it is. ¿Verdad? Okay. Are the camps far from New York City? Recuerden, si comenzamos con el auxiliar directamente, la pregunta es de sí o no. Si comenzamos con una WH word, entonces, entonces es una information question. If it's a, a question that begins directly with the auxiliary or with the, um, uh, with the model, that means that I'm looking for a yes or a no. But if I'm including a WH word, so that means that this is going to be information questions and that they are looking for a very specific detail. So the question, are the camps far from New York City? Is it yes, they are or no, they aren't? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. What are some yes, things? Are. Yes, correct. What are some things children do at the camp or at camp? Swimming. Okay, they making, go swimming. Mm -hmm. making, what else? Like making bed. Making their beds. Okay, what else? Fishing. Fishing. Hiking. hiking. Okay. There are several activities, right? Now, number five, can a seven-year-old go to the camp? Can a seven-year-old go to the camp? Um, I don't remember. Maybe uh, I think this. No, 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 no right? No, they just the. Uh, no, I can't. Fighting. Mm -hmm. Fighting. No, she can't. Exactly. No, they can't. Very good. In this case, no, he or she can't, right? Because the camp is for um, children between. 8 and 15 years old, ¿verdad? Can a seven-year-old live with a host family? Yes, I can. Yes, they can. And what are some yes, things children do with host families? What are some things children do with host families? Mm -hmm. Only can... spend the summer with them. They only spend the summer with them, okay. And can a child who lives with a host family go back for a second year? Can they do that?
Can they do that? Can they go back for a second year? Yes, there. Yes. Yes, they can, right? Very yes, good. They can. Mm -hmm. Is the teacher yes, he can. Or or maybe is yes, they can. O sea, can yo estaba pensando yo en mi, mi mente estaba pensando can can children right who live with the host family go back for a second year? Yes, they can. Porque hablaba mm -hmm. en general la lectura. Pero si es solo un niño, yes, he can or yes, she can. Uh -huh. Porque we don't know if it's a girl or a boy. Right? Yes, he or she can. Uh -huh. uh, it, it, uh, it says that most are invited back. Yes, I was thinking about this time porque esos, esos programas eh, son bien comunes, especialmente en Europa. So I was I was you know thinking about a documentary porque hay un documental en el que en el que sí estos programas existen y invitan tratan de invitar a niños de países pues con pues, bajos recursos verdad y los siguen invitando verdad y, y arman arman como ese lazo they make a bond verdad Se forman un lazo and, and they invite them back mm -hmm. that's right yes. the sound amazing right mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. This sound amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Now, eh, over here we have some questions, right? Now, the questions are related to the um to the reading, pero en el, en el en el que tienen ustedes, verdad, es diferente. Okay, because this one, you look, it asks you for uh for a different reading. It's a I think it's neighbor versus neighbor, right? In section 1, in la sección 1. But this one includes you know uh, a, a different um, section too entonces para que también veamos el de la plataforma now aquí está el ejercicio verdad que nos mencionaban ustedes este de acá y nosotros lo resolvimos verdad y vieron que lo resolvimos y pues tratamos de buscar las preguntas perdón las respuestas correctas now what happens eh, with with this one okay with this four I mean, 1.9. Ok, ¿cómo nos queda el 1.9? No sé si alguien ha tenido algún problema con este, con el, con el 1.9. Se lo voy a mostrar para que ustedes vean. Estas son las respuestas, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, we have, could you lend me 20 dollars? Are you kidding? I don't have any cash. Right? La, la respuesta es a little bit different, es un poquito diferente. Can you get me a sandwich? I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. But I'm busy. Yeah, I'm busy. Mm -hmm. Can you help me move my to my new house? Sure, no problem. I'll be glad to. Would you mind not sitting here? Sorry, I didn't realize this seat was taken. ¿verdad? Si ustedes se fijan, las, las preguntas difieren un poquito con las que están en el manual. Mm -hmm. ¿verdad? Entonces, por eso lo estoy mostrando para que ustedes vean. So, would you mind not sitting here? Sorry, I didn't realize this seat was uh, was taken, right? Could you move your car from my, my space? I'm sorry, I'll do it right away. Would you mind not talking so loudly? We're sorry, we'll talk more quietly. So, Difieren unas dos, quizás preguntas difieren de las que están en el manual, ¿verdad? Eh, igual, si de repente tienen preguntas, me avisan, ¿verdad? Para yo poder revisar las respuestas y que ustedes puedan eh, ver eso conmigo. Now, there's a reading here. The reading that they present in the, in, the, uh, in the platform is different, ¿verdad? So, for this one, Ibrahim, creo que usted me, me quería ayudar a leer en, en el anterior. Eh, si quiere... Pues leamos este de acá y le voy a compartir aquí, chicos, el, el, la lectura. Deme un momento. Aquí se lo voy a compartir en el chat. Bear with me. Okay. 
I have the platform in my computer. Ah, sí, sí, no, pero para el resto. Solo. Ahí está, ya se lo compartí. Ok, so let's go ahead and begin. Ayúdeme hasta these things to me y luego continuamos con más participantes. ¿De arriba? Yes, hasta the this. In the mm -hmm. Ok. Go, 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 Iván. Go, go, go. <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> Here we go. The woman That in the apartment was... upstairs play her piano after midnight. The family across the street never dance over their yard. They are bash blows into your yard. The guys next door always park. He's car in front of your driveway. How things like this ever happening to you? If so, you may uh, you make us yourselves. Who are these people? Where are they, they doing does this this the things to me? The long no. This things Why are to they me. Think these things to me. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ivan. Yes, right. So take a look at the situations, right? So woman in the upstairs, I mean in the apartment upstairs, she plays the piano after midnight. Can you imagine that? The second situation, the family across the street never cleans up this yard, their yard. So the garbage blow into your yard, which is very common in El Salvador, by the way. Uh, <laughs> number three, the guy next door always parks his car in front of your driveway. Cualquier parecido es pura coincidencia, right? So your driveway is cabal. En, en inglés, driveway es la salida de su casa. Cabal donde generalmente usted estaciona es la salida. Allí es el driveway, ¿verdad? And, and then, y, y, como Iván estaba leyendo, ¿verdad? Have things like this ever happened to you? ¿Ya les ha pasado? So, yes, in my case, it has happened to me. So, can you please continue, Damaris, with the second paragraph, siguiente párrafo, hasta maybe they do it deliberately. Okay. Um, this day, many people don't know their neighbor. Sometimes we share a friendly way or say hello. But a lot of people don't even know their neighbor's name. Uh, when you don't know some meal, it's easy to feel if frustration and, and resentment, mm -hmm. you think. Maybe they like to annoy me, mm, or maybe me. they do it uh, live. I don't. <laughs> Deliberately. Deliberately. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Now, this one, this section, guys, mm, you have to think twice because sometimes uh, we 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 may, we may judge people and we are quick, you know, to jump into conclusions. And sometimes, you know, we do not take into account what the person is going through. And I will tell you one example. It happened to me. Here, where I'm living, eh, it's a new city. It's a new town. So I'm far away from when I, where I used to live. So I registered my daughter in a school near my house. And I didn't know that the different streets, they have sections. Hay secciones. Unos, en unas, los carros van hacia un lado y en otra van hacia el otro. So, the first date, I did the opposite. Me metí en donde no era. O sea, iba a sentido contrario. Menos mal que es, es bien así como tranquilo, solito, ¿verdad? No es muy movido. So, I was ashamed. I was embarrassed. And I said, oh my goodness, I didn't know. Second day, well, a, a todas esas, ¿verdad? Um, there was a guy. Había un chico en la esquina. And he looked at me very angry, like, right, what's going on with you? Y mi mente decía, no sé para dónde agarrar, I don't, I don't know this place. Next day, it happened the same thing. Y esta vez sí venía un bus, right? And, and he told me that it, I didn't have to turn, you know, to turn right, porque era hacia mi derecha. 
And I say, oh, I understand, ahora entiendo. So I just, you know, um, went ahead and drive for one more block and then I turned right. Esa era la calle donde tenía que doblar. So, um, but the guy was very angry, right? And, and I said, wow, this guy was very quick to judge me. And probably he didn't know that I'm new in the city and I don't, I don't know the place. And so says, I'm a new neighbor, right? And, and, and it, this reminds me, right, of, of, of what happened to me. Por eso yo aprendí, dije yo, no, next time voy a dar el beneficio de la duda. But sometimes we don't. Y pasa lo que, lo que la gente dice en esa última línea de lo que ustedes acaban de leer, que dice, maybe that they do it deliberately. Ok, hacer algo liber, deliberadamente es hacerlo a propósito. Y a veces somos bien, bien duros, ¿verdad? En juzgar, ¿verdad? So maybe they do it deliberately. Siempre demos el beneficio de la duda, ¿verdad? Entonces, and it's true, it says sometimes we should a friendly wave, a friendly wave or say hello. Like, hey, buenos días, ¿verdad? Oh, hi, ¿verdad? Entonces, and, and we don't even know the neighbor's name, right? We don't know the people directly, right? And, and, and look at what it says. It's easy to build that frustration and resentment. Y gran resentimiento, ¿verdad? Que tenemos a veces porque nos cayó un mango y el mango se pudrió afuera de la puerta. Ah, ok. And then, de ahí en adelante ya no se nos olvidó. Entonces, resentment, resentimiento. ¿verdad? Maybe they like to annoy me or maybe they do it deliberately. ¿Verdad? En España, aquí en, en San decimos que lo hacen por molestar. Bueno, usan otra palabra, pero decimos lo hacen por molestar. Entonces, esas son las frases, ¿verdad? Maybe they, they like to annoy me or maybe they do it deliberately. What about the next one? Eh, Xiomara y luego María Dolores con el oh. siguiente párrafo. Ok. Turn not your neighbors for being to irritate you. Often you know that they getting on your So before you take a steps to fix the problem, you should discuss them first. Ok, discuss, right? Muy bien. Now take a look at... ¿Dónde vamos, verdad? It says, believe it or not, your neighbors probably don't mean to irritate you, como en mi caso. I always, you know, remember the teacher's, you know, um, uh, situation. So it was not my case. I didn't want to irritate them. I didn't want, like, to do it my way, como dicen, como hacer lo que yo quería. No. I just made a mistake and I didn't know. I was I was a new neighbor, so I made a mistake. And it's often they, they don't even know what they're getting on your nerves or, or that they're getting on your nerves. To get on your nerves, it's when you get you re, you get really angry for something that really annoys you, right? So before you take extreme measures, porque pues hoy en día vemos de todo, ¿verdad? Eh, before you take extreme measures to fix the problem, and I open quotation marks, fix the problem, and, you know, uh, you should discuss it with them first, right? To ask, mire, ¿por qué pasó tal cosa? ¿O por qué lo hizo? Ah, and then you can get an explanation, pero a veces la gente también es un poco proud or picky, and they don't like to accept right that they made a mistake or that they just um did they didn't do it deliberately but no están como open to conversation verdad what about the next one eh, maria dolores yes when you approach your neighbors you should talk to them a friendly manner complete compliment their children also or to some time is to make them feel good. Then explain the situation and if you can think of a simple solution to get it. To get it. Suggest it. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Now, this one is a very good piece of advice. And I think whenever we um, have a situation with our neighbors, lo primero que hacemos es ir a... Nosotros decimos, voy a preguntar, pero en realidad eso es un reclamo. ¿verdad? But actually, this is a very good suggestion. You see, uh, like when you approach your neighbors, you should talk to them in a friendly way. Si usted llega, como dicen en español, con la espada desenvainada, right? So you're going to get a, an angry person. But if you go and if you talk to your neighbor in a friendly way, so this person might, you know, eh, eh, put down their guard, 
right? And also compliment their children or do something else to make them feel good. Mira, aquí le traigo, ¿verdad? Or, um, eh, wow, qué bonito su jardín, what a beautiful garden, etc. And then you include the point. Hey, you know what? The, uh, yesterday you parked your car in front of my driveway. So I don't know if we can, you know, fix the problem because... Uh, I really needed to go out and I couldn't, right? So, but you introduce, you know, the, the, the situation in a friendly way, okay? And the last one, el último, eh, Julio César está en la lista. O sea, voy, voy así, voy por los que, en la lista que, que están las manitas. Julio César. Okay. Uh, give me a minute, please. Uh, here. Mm -hmm. um, if talking doesn't work, as another person to help. This person can listen to both sides of the story and help you and your neighbor resolve the situation. Finally, sometimes it's a good idea to avoid the problem depending on the issue. It might be best to, you, to just stay out of your neighbor's way. Mm -hmm. I think this is a very good piece of advice as well, because we never know who we are talking to. And also, um, I thank you uh, all. Thank you all guys for helping me with the, with the reading. Uh, also, it's important, right? If you are angry, please, please stop, breathe, okay? Go and watch a video, a funny video. Yeah, I mean, do something else. Try to distract your mind because when you are angry, it's when you say the things that you regret about later. So be careful. If you are angry, if you have a situation with your neighbors, so just, yeah, I mean, it's okay. We all, you know, have our right to feel angry. But just go and look at the sky, you know, breathe count uh, from 1 to 10 for, from 1 to 100 if possible or count to 100 if possible and watch a video or a short video about something funny right and talk to someone hey this happened to me what would you do <laughs> no sale peor, ah, yo haría esto. Entonces, but no just talk to the right person okay don't talk to someone that it's um uh even angrier than you are así que this is the reading that we have in the platform okay so now with this reading we end the um the section one pero quería ver acá este ah ya lo vimos verdad ya, ya dijimos este ejercicio ya les di las respuestas bye okay very good preguntas chicos de la plataforma sección uno para pasar a la dos todavía tenemos 15 minutos para dejarlo aunque sea empezado Questions? No questions, teacher. No questions, teacher. Bye. Okay, I'm going to close here. This and let's open the section two. Bear with me, guys. And... Inter. Bio, you see? So now we're moving to section two, okay? In section two, right, we, we begin with the following. It says, in this class, you will practice using infinitives and gerunds for uses and purposes. De hecho, chicos, este uso es bien común, ¿verdad? Gerunds for, um, for uses and purposes. And you will see. Ya van a ver cómo es que los usamos, okay? So what's this for? What's this for? That's a very good question, right? Uh, whenever you find something that probably it's not you're not familiar with, actually, um, for instance, you ask the question, "What's this for?" Right? Uh, when you um, receive, you know, a present and you don't know what the the gadget is, right? So you ask, "What's this for?" Right? So we have here the introduction through some a uh, a. Uh, you know, uh, vocabulary words, right? It says advances in science and technology in the second half of the 20th century. We have a timeline 
from 1957 through 1989, okay? So it says in 1957, well, we, um, let's say, uh, I don't want to say we created because actually we didn't, but artificial satellites were introduced to the world, right? Artificial satellites. In 1962, right, uh, they, they began to build industrial robots, right? In 1972, so 10 years after that, we have, you know, video games or video games consoles, right? In 1984, the compact disc or the CD or CD room, right? It was introduced to the public. In 1986, DNA or fingerprinting, right? Was used in laboratories, right? For the first time. And then in 1989, we finally had, you know, the introduction of the World Wide Web or WWW, right? Which is the internet, right? It says, talk about these questions. Can you explain the significance of each of these advances? Which do you think is the most important or the least important? Which have affected your life and which have not? So can I have some volunteers to give your opinions regarding, I mean, related to these questions? Volunteers? Me, teacher. Go ahead. Y luego, se mara. Mm -hmm. For me, the more, the most important um, thing is the 1989, because worldwide, well, is very important for we we life for is, our life our we life then we need we can reach each uh, thing for we need for for we need to know mm -hmm. okay thank you very much yes i mean it's a lot of knowledge that we have access to now because as you were saying before, I remember guys, in my case, I used to go to libraries and I used to write down all the information, you know, from books, right? Uh, I used to visit uh, La Biblioteca Nacional and I would go there with one of my classmates who is now my best friend, who like 20 years after that, more than 20 years we have been friends. And we used to go to the library and 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 to, you know, do our homework and to write down the information because we didn't have access to photocopies, right? And as as Hector Ivan was saying, right, we have access to a lot of information now through the internet, and that is good and bad at the same time. Todo pues en exceso y usado de la forma incorrecta pues siempre va a ser malo, pero if you use it properly, you you can get a lot of you know advantages from the internet. Uh, Xiomara, please. Thank you. Uh, well, I am agree with the, the, the guy, Hector. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the the world, worldwide uh, web has affected my life. Uh, we can find all the mm -hmm. That's true. I think it has affected everybody's lives, right? In, in, in which ways, Yomara, it, it has affected you? I didn't hear you well. It is the sound. Ah, okay. No, I, I, I ask. ¿En qué manera le ha afectado? Positivamente, ¿verdad? ¿En qué manera? For me, positive. Uh, for my kid, sometimes well, sometimes bad because <laughs> only a, on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> it's very addictive. That's the problem yeah. that a, a, it becomes an addiction, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Samara. Now, just this, right? You can say I agree with or I'm in agreement with. Como verbo agree. Y como nombre o sustantivo, agreement. So, I agree with, en este caso podemos decir, I agree with my classmate, ¿verdad? Or, I'm in agreement with my classmate, ¿verdad? 
Cualquiera de las dos puede usar. Okay. So thank you very much, guys, for sharing your opinion. Now. Ah, okay. Está bien. Carla Elena, hasta ahorita veo su mensaje, lo siento. Ah, y creo que se lo mandé a Ada. Vaya, vale, ahora sí tiene que caerles a todos ahí. Vaya, vale. I was saying here, this is the introduction, right, to the next point. And what is the introduction? Well, the introduction is through this conversation to the following topic, which is infinitives and gerunds. Now, here we have a conversation, right? It says, listen and practice. Let me see if we have it, if we have the same conversation in the platform. And let me see. Give me one moment. Perdón, alguien tenía la mano levantada, no vi. Pero si tienen preguntas, me avisan. Aquí está. Creo que aquí está la conversación. I use my cell phone to call my friends. The we can describe how something is used. Infinitive. Jim. No, no tiene la, la, el audio de, de, la, de, la, de la conversation. Va, entonces la leo yo, no hay problema. It says, hey, night's nice computer. What's this for? That's a modem. It's used to connect the computer to the phone line so I can send faxes and access the internet. So you can go online and all that? Yes, and I use the World Wide Web to for finding information on astronomy, movies, UFOs, just about everything. Sports, cars. Uh huh. And I can exchange information with people too. I belong to a chat group on astronomy. Hmm. I'll just use my computer to write letters and reports. Why don't you get on the internet? It's not really expensive. Maybe I will. It sounds like fun. Okay? Now, take a look at the usage. Veamos ahí el uso así rapidito de los... Oh, give me one second. Voy a abrir aquí. Ahí está. Here. It says, hey, nice computer. La pregunta. What's this for? ¿Para qué sirve? That's a mother, modem. It's used to connect the computer to the phone line. ¿verdad? It's, or it is, ¿verdad? It is used to connect the computer to the phone line. ¿verdad? Um, acá. And I use the World Wide Web for finding information on astronomy. Okay. Um, let me see. Creo que solo esos dos ejemplos trae, okay? Now, take a look. Whenever we, we, we used um, the infinitives, right? It, it is used to connect. Es usado para. It is used to. O puedo decir for. Verdad. ¿verdad? It is uh, used for finding information, pero generalmente lo vamos a encontrar así. I used... Dice el nombre de lo que se utiliza para for finding information on astronomy. Y luego, it is used to, and then you say the verb or the infinitive in this case. Infinitive verbs are the ones that begin with the particle to. Okay? To dance, to write, to think, etc. And then we have for. For is a preposition. ¿verdad? Y por ser preposición, cada vez que yo uso una preposición y yo quiero decir un verbo después de esa preposición, it has to be a gerund form. Tiene que ser en ing. ¿Ok? Pero me detengo y pregunto, questions about the conversation? Questions about the conversation? No? Teacher, what's the meaning of UFOs. <laughs> UFOs. UFOs, I think those are the uh, unknown flying objects, right? Uh, or los objetos voladores no identificados. Or okay. an, unidentified uh, flying objects. Uh -huh. 
Let me see you are coming. This uh, unidentifying flying object, uh huh? I unidentifying flying object. Sí. Mm -hmm. What else? Any other question? Preguntas? No? Vaya. Entonces, ¿cómo usamos eh, eh, gerunds and infinitives for purpose? Acuérdense que gerunds and infinitives, they have lots of uses. uses. Hay un montón de usos, pero aquí solo se enfoca en use, uh, I mean, purpose. O sea, ¿para qué sirve? Eh, sea lo que sea de lo que estamos hablando. Eh, here we have examples with infinitives. A modern, a modern is used to connect computers to phones. Computers are often used to write letters. I can use the World Wide Web to find the information. Entonces, ven ahí la relación entre el verbo, ¿verdad? Que tenemos used y sus diferentes formas, ¿verdad? Porque a modern is used, voz pasiva, ¿verdad? Eh, computers are often used, voz pasiva. I can use the World Wide Web to find the information. Ahí, no es, ahí es un verbo modal. No. Now, what happens with the gerunds? It's used for connecting computer to computers to phones, and they're often used for writing letters. And finally, I can use it for finding information. Now, ¿qué es lo que me va a indicar acá? Que necesito un gerund? The preposition. Mm -hmm. The preposition. Exactly. If I have a preposition and right after that preposition I need a verb, it has to be with the ing form. And don't forget the relation between use and the um, the infinitive. Obviously, as I said before, we have plenty of uses for infinitives and gerunds, right? Y también pues hay otra forma. Um, also, we use gerunds with adjectives. Por ejemplo, cuando yo digo, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to meet you, right? Encan Estoy encantado de conocerte. I'm glad to meet you, un infinitivo. Usamos los infinitivos también después de los adjetivos, ¿verdad? Um, she's delighted to invite you. Ella está encantada de invitarte. She's delighted to invite you. Entonces, por, como les digo, hay muchos usos que le podemos dar, pero esto solo es uno de ellos, ¿verdad? And these are the infinitives and gerunds. Eh, I'm going to continue also with this topic tomorrow because there are also some exercises and grammar points that I would like to cover tomorrow. Porque ya después, uy, perdón. Después de eso viene un exercise. It says, what do you know about this technology, right? Complete the phrases in column A with information from column B. Esto ustedes lo tienen en su manual. Por eso yo siempre los invito a que estén con su manual a la mano. ¿Verdad? Ahorita estoy en la página 8. Look. Página 8. Ya me pasé a la página 9. Entonces, just try to go to your manual. And we're going to have a quick discussion on this one. Okay? Satellites are used. Robots are sometimes used. You can use a fax machine. People use the internet. DNA fingerprinting is used. See the room is sometimes used. So I need you to go to this page and create sentences, okay, with uh, the, the halves, right, that we have on letter B. And tomorrow we're going to check it, okay? And also the syllable stress that we have. So try to have your manual handy every time we have class so we can discuss information from there as well. So I'm going to pass the attendance. Voy a pasar la asistencia para que podamos ir finalizando, permítanme. Also, if you have questions about the platform, you can bring your, um, your questions tomorrow, okay? Because Friday, we don't have class. ¿Verdad? No hay class. Eh, Ada Agar Burgos Magaña está por acá. Present. Ahí está, thank you. Eh, permítanme. Damari Sarai García Cerón. Eh, no está. Elsie Cristina Correa Serramírez. Present. 
Thank you. Eh, Francisco Antonio Calderón Rivera. Present teacher. Thank you. Francisco Ernesto Jiménez Rivera. I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Eh, Iván, no, Héctor Iván Pérez Martínez. Present teacher. Thank you. Carla Elena López Rivas. Present teacher. Thank you, Kevin Alexander Sánchez Ramos. No vino. And Maria Dolores Garcia de López. Present teacher. Thank you. Y Jocelyn Elizabeth González Cartagena. No vino. Vaya. Entonces, then with the rest, ¿verdad? Eh, yo creo que ya. Solo déjeme confirmar. Dígame, Carla. Ay, perdón, casi no se le escucha. Repita. That if you can finish the platform today, is that what you ask? I think it's today is Wednesday. Yes, you can complete it today if you want, right? And also tomorrow, they are going to check your ad advances, right, in the platform. Mañana le van a ver el progreso y le van a poner la nota de lo que tengan. So if you want to complete some of the exercises for tomorrow, that's perfect. They will check tomorrow your score for unit, I mean, for section one and two. Esas son las dos que sí tienen que estar ya listas, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Any other question? Preguntas? Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay. Entonces, I'm going to stop here, guys, and thank you very much for joining. Nos vemos el día de mañana para terminar los temas, okay? Have a good night and see you tomorrow. Good night. Thank you, teacher. See you tomorrow. Bye. See you tomorrow. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye, teacher. Bye, everyone. Bye.